I love cautionary tales. And as everyone knows, the best cautionary tales are the ones with lessons that are completely inapplicable to real life. Ill-advised magical wishes, powerful sorceresses with extremely specific instructions, highly judgmental magical beings doling out punishments to the unworthy. I may be shaky at best on filing taxes and annual car maintenance, but you better believe I know what I'm not gonna wish for in the event of a surprise genie or divine boon. Now, when it comes to ill-advised wish stories, King Midas of Phrygia is probably the most well-known mythological case, and is mostly known in the mythos for being broadly very dumb. If Midas is in a myth, you better believe he's not gonna have a good time, and you better believe it will be 100% his own fault. King Midas is most well-known for two particularly embarrassing vignettes in his career recounted in Ovid's Metamorphoses, so let's talk about him today. Now, our story begins when our sweet bacchanal boy Dionysus notices his crew of revelers and followers is apparently short one member. The elderly satyr Selenus, a drunken prophet and also Dionysus' foster father, is nowhere to be found. This is because he got super drunk and passed out in a region that happened to belong to King Midas and was captured and brought to his court. Now, fortunately for Selenus, King Midas is up to date on his Orphic Dionysian lore and recognizes him as a follower of Dionysus and honors his presence in the court with a full ten days of feasting and revelry. When Dionysus rolls into town to pick him up, he's so happy with Midas' treatment of Selenus that he offers Midas a boon, any boon. Midas has prepared his whole life for this moment and asks Dionysus to make everything he touches turn to pure gold. Now, Dionysus may be the god of wine and drunken madness, but he knows a bad idea when he hears one. But he did promise Midas any boon, so he reluctantly agrees, and Midas is absolutely delighted by his newfound golden touch. Until dinner time, when he learns that food and drink count as part of everything and turn to gold as soon as he tries to eat. Gold is regrettably not very nutritious, and this boon situation threatens to become a very bad time very quickly. Now, fun fact, there's a popular version of this story that I actually referenced in an earlier video, whoops, where Midas accidentally turns his daughter to gold. But as far as I can tell, that version was invented in 1851 by American author Nathaniel Hawthorne and isn't referenced any earlier than that, which is a shame because it's a pretty gnarly twist. In Ovid's version, at least, Midas doesn't need any more motivation than hunger to realize that this particular wish was ill-advised and beg Dionysus to help him. Dionysus directs him to the river Pactolus and tells him to jump in, which washes Midas clean of the gift-turned curse, and as a fun bonus, loads the river full of rich gold deposits, which was actually true. The Pactolus was loaded with electrum, a natural alloy of gold and silver that the Lydian Iron Age culture used to make the first coins in history. Thanks, Midas. Now, Midas, free of his curse and the consequences of his actions, has had enough of gold and riches for a while and decides to relax and unwind by living alone in the woods, which coincidentally is where the wilderness god Pan likes to hang out with his Pan posse. Pan is, in fact, playing on his pan pipes, having a grand old time when he gets super into the moment and boasts that his music is so good it's even better than Apollo's. Now, Apollo is never one to pass up an opportunity for some petty conflict, so he zorps down to the mountain to challenge this bold claim, and he and Pan declare an official competition with Timolus, god of the mountain, serving as an impartial judge. Pan cuts loose on the pan pipes and plays a beautiful rustic melody, which is very nice and charming, but Apollo's classically trained and also the literal god of music, and his lyre playing is straight up breathtaking, so Timolus declares Apollo the better musician. Everyone is pretty happy with this outcome, except for Midas, who's been listening in, fails to read the room, and decides to play Satyr's advocate by declaring that he thinks Pan is actually the better player. Apollo's like, if this chump really believes that, he must be rocking some donkey ears or something. And the raw power of that sick nasty burn physically transforms Midas' normal human ears into donkey ears. Midas hides those bad boys under a big turban so nobody finds out the truth or questions him for anything beyond dubious fashion choices, but he can't hide from his barber, who stalwartly keeps it a secret from everyone, but eventually gets so pent up that he goes out, digs a hole, whispers the truth into the the hole and then buries it, which sounds like something you'd get recommended in therapy and would probably have been totally harmless if it hadn't caused reeds to grow from that spot that whispered the secret whenever the wind blew through them. Truly hilarious, we need more plants like this. Do you ponder the matter of things in the dark, the dark, the dark, the dark? I am flesh and I am bone, I'll rise ting ting like glitter and gold. I got fire in my soul, rise up ting ting like glitter.